Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. So the Chinese situation seems to have kind of um, flattened itself out with the, um, the actual most recent midpoint for the yuan up slightly firmer, than, uh, which was uh, stipulated by the by the Chinese government. So things are kind of looking a little bit easier today. Some great data coming out of the US yesterday for uh, for retail sales. Well, then it was it was beat estimates anyway, and uh, you do have more data um, later on in today's session, which is interest rate sensitive for the US. So. Um, looking at GBP, USD, Euro dollar and dollar yen, they've all been moving sideways um, action throughout most of the night session. Gold's come off a fair bit as well from uh, 11.25 down to about 11.15. Uh, so take from that as uh, as you may. But certainly the US macro data still looks good. Uh, I think China now, we're just going to have a wait and see approach. There's not going to be constant devaluation of the, of the yuan. And ultimately, you know, it's a fixed currency. It's not free floating the same as uh, you know the euro and the dollar and everything else. So of course there needs to be instances where they need to um, to kind of slightly change that peg there slightly. Uh, so it's not a massive, massive surprise. You know people are looking at, at China creating this big, massive currency war. It's all just kind of propaganda and everything else. So uh, yes, they will look to devalue their currency uh, to try and make themselves more competitive. But they're only just doing what everybody else is doing to a certain extent. So that's currently where we sit with the US 30 volatile session. Not that volatile really versus the previous day session. That's proper volatility right there, but um, a kind of a doji formation yesterday, showing lots of indecision. Same again today, just trading above potential support at 17,361. Other technicals are pretty neutral. So having a look at the UK 100, because of all the mining uh, and oil and gas stocks that make up the UK 100, pressure is still on uh, this index. So we're trading below potential support at 65.89. Um, negative day yesterday, slightly negative today, bearish cross in the MACD, other technical show, extra room for maneuver. And uh, that's currently where we, uh, where we set for the UK 100. Um, looking at Japan 225, because dollar yen isn't doing a huge amount, either is it. In between two ranges, 28.68 is potential resistance, 20.087 is potential support gives you a flavor of that. And then having a look at dollar yen in more detail, uh, it looks to be the last couple of sessions oscillating around 124.42. Technical indicators completely flattening out. Um, and we're not seeing a massive gain by the US dollar, but we're not seeing a continued slide that we have been for the last number of days. So um, with the data, if I actually go back to Thursday, you can see the retail sales data right here, how we had, uh, it was expected to be at 0 0.5, coming in 0 0.6. It's not like it's amazingly like smashing it, but it's still better than what it, what it was expected to be. And uh, if we then look at today, you've got Eurozone CPI, but you've got this uh, other US data of PPI due at 1.30 uh, UK time. And I, I think that's uh, that, that's going to be quite keenly watched as well. So looking at West Texas crude, it's down even more. It's down even lower this morning, uh, below potential support. Uh, it was down at 141.32. So uh, $42 is the potential support. Next potential support is all the way down at $35, to be honest. Uh, crude oil inventories uh, much higher than expected. That kind of caught the market off guard. You see yesterday's candle is about a 3% drop in West Texas crude. So we're now currently, uh, but we were first thing this morning, below the 2009 um, kind of crisis point. To certainly, I think six and well, actually that's not right. Six and a half year lows currently. It'd have to be $35 or less to be below the credit, the height of the credit crunch. Um, but just look at look at the steepness of uh, of the sell off we've seen in West Texas since the um, the end of June. There, it's just uh, it's dropped about looks to be about 30 percent to be fair. So that's West Texas crude fundamentals not it's in its current favour. With Iran, China slow down, uh, potentially the rise and the increase of the US dollar. But it's gold now that looks kind of interesting. So we've had these last three days of uh, real strong growth and then a relatively strong reversal yesterday, falling on from that stronger than expected retail sales. Um, having a look at some of the short term US uh, interest rate markets, um, they're taking the opposite direction to what they're doing yesterday. Now. And I think um, many traders are waiting to get this uh, last piece of PPI data out of the US today at 1.30 UK time to again reevaluate the likelihood of a rate hike in September. Though it does just feel that there's just so many different factors in play right now that September just seems like it would be uh, just, just way too soon and a little bit unnecessary. But who knows how these things pan out. Certainly there's about a 40-45% chance priced in looking at the short term US interest rate markets. Uh, but that goes up or down depending on the macro economic data coming out of the US. And even though there is a slowdown in China and everything else, the macro data, it's all data dependent, right? And these data events are coming out 
pretty uh, pretty well. So the next potential support uh, resistance, sorry, is still at 1137, but we're miles away from uh, potential support on gold. Um, normally, you would take the temp of this candle right here. Uh, which was broken resistance now acting as support probably around about 1110 so we're not a million miles away from there so I'll, I'll leave that on there for now and see how gold uh, finishes up later on in the session so euro dollar managed to keep its head above one spot 11 which was potential support longer term potential resistance one spot 1474 other technicals relatively neutral with only the RSI just about to go into over bought territory but it's not done it yet and you can see the tips of these candles around about 112 20 uh, it could be short-term potential resistance, just the tips of those candles there. You can just see it from uh, Friday the 10th of June, uh, and just more so recently, it's uh, failed to break above that. But we are trading above both moving averages, which should be seen as a short-term positive from a technical perspective. And then finishing up with GBPUSD, as ever, one spot 56 is the level of the day, and it's continuously oscill oscillating around there, and it seems to have been doing it for the last month and a half easily. So you can look at the other technical indicators, they're all very flat. So that's the economic data for this week. We fast forward on to Monday, not much to talk about. Tuesday, a whole host of UK CPI and PPI and RPI data, 9.30. So if you're a cable trader, maybe you might be able to break out that one spot 56 range. Um, and then if we go on to Wednesday, you've got crude elementary. So there's not really a huge amount of economic data out for the next uh, few days to start off the week. So make the most out of the uh, the data. And there's no uh, Chinese data at the weekend, which are great, because that sometimes causes a bit of havoc on Sundays. Um, but yeah, make the best use out of the data that's due today. So you've got Eurozone uh, CPI and the US PPI data as well. So I can see there's a number of clients and CMC Markets analysts posting some good content on the chart forum. Make sure you make insights part of your layout going forward and join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.